Hey everyone, I hope you guys are going well. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to cover off everything that I do in my day-to-day -day job as a risk and product focused data scientist working in a fintech in Sydney, Australia. So this was a highly requested video and is actually the most content heavy and informative video that I think I have on my channel so far. So feel free to have a notebook out or come back with a coffee or tea before we get straight into it. I've also got my notes on my laptop which is right in front of me so I might just look down every so often and don't forget to like and subscribe it would really mean a lot to me and help my channel grow. So firstly I'm going to give a bit of background on my role and what I support in the business. I would actually consider myself a relatively multidisciplinary data scientist who works with many cross-functional teams across the business. I was actually hired as a risk data scientist to build predictive credit risk models However, over time, my role has evolved into a much more product focused role as the business has grown a lot over the last couple of years. And when I say product, I mean something that has a user interface and a customer base such as Spotify, Instagram or YouTube. I work in a fintech company in Sydney, Australia, which is pretty much the intersection of finance and technology, where all of our customers use our app to help better manage their finances. In my role, I work closely with the risk team, product and tech people, as well as the marketing team. I'm actually going to split today's video into two separate parts, um, as I think that my work is quite different between the two. So the first one that I'm going to focus on is when I'm doing a project, so this could be a model build or some kind of strategy piece. And the second half is when I'm just supporting ad hoc risk strategies across the business. And don't worry if this is confusing now, I'm going to break it down pretty soon. So as I said earlier, I was hired as a risk data scientist, which means that I have to build predictive risk models to predict an outcome. So there are multiple different types of risk. You guys might have heard of your market risk, liquidity risk, or even fraud risk. But my main focus is credit risk, which is essentially the loss that comes with people being unable to repay back their loans. So imagine that you have a credit card that you've been using to do all your online shopping during lockdown. And of course, with a credit card, every month you have to make a minimum monthly repayment. Now this could be $100, it could be $20, it could be your closing balance. But let's say that, you know, one day you are still waiting to get paid and you have no money left in your savings account to pay off your credit card balance. This is when you're going to end up missing your payment. And because of this, you're going to roll over into something called delinquency, which is essentially meaning that you are now overdue on your payments. Now, as a risk data scientist, this is what I have to predict. So, is our customer going to be able to afford that $3,000 laptop that they bought themselves last month? And are they going to end up missing payments in the next few months? And if so, how can we identify these risky customers in advance and use this knowledge to better make business decisions? For example, can we proactively give them a call and be like, hey, you need to update your bank account, otherwise you're going to have no money left. Or can we just be a bit more drastic and place a block on their account, which would then not let them be able to transact further. Now, on the other hand, what about our most low risk, best customers? Instead of punishing these customers, we would want to reward them. But what can we do? Maybe we could give them more offers or even more money to spend. As you can see, the work that we do as a data scientist has a significant positive impact on the business. As we move to a world with more and more data, businesses inevitably want to leverage this data in order to make better business decisions, and therefore this role is in such demand right now. So in terms of the actual process that I undertake to do an entire model build, I've actually got a video up on this on my channel already, so I'm going to link it up here and also leave it down in the description box below. So make sure you go check out that video on the entire data science lifecycle. It's a lot more comprehensive, so I'm going to keep this part a bit more concise. Now, depending on if you are new to the business or even the product that you are building a model for, it is imperative that you understand the product construct. Now, these are questions which sort of talk about how the product works. Is it a monthly billing cycle like your credit card? How does a product generate revenue? And how does it grow its customer base? You know, just all the nuances of a specific company that you are working for. So a lot of my role is actually spent doing data exploration in SQL, where I just look around to find out, you know, what data exists and where it's stored. 
I will also try to make sense of all this data and just, you know, do some quick data wrangling to make sure that my understanding is correct. For example, you know, is this customer ID column really what I'm looking for? And is it going to be correct if I join it onto this other column? It is so easy to join on one wrong variable and that is going to ruin your entire analysis. So really make sure that you are checking your code and output every single step of the way. So once this is done and I've done all my data exploration, my data wrangling, my data understanding, I'm now going to move on to data preparation where I'll spend maybe a couple of weeks, you know, gathering a whole bunch of data sources and creating variables. Now, of course, this includes data cleaning where, you know, your variables are going to have missing values or just a whole bunch of like outliers that you have to deal with. Um, a model also has to be built over multiple different snapshots. So I might have to extract the same data, but over many different time frames to ensure that I have no seasonality in my data. For example, you can't just be looking at transactions over Christmas because that is always going to be the highest point in the year. And many people might think, oh, data scientists, all they do is build fancy machine learning models. Well, that is not correct at all. These models actually don't take too long to build as they're generally built via packages in various programming languages, which don't require too much human input at all. In fact, modeling is probably the part of my job that takes the least. Many algorithms out there can actually train your model as well as tune all the parameters. Now, every model that I output, I will also have to productionize. Now, this is allow the model to be used by the rest of the business in an easy way. Most of our work is done in Databricks or Jupyter Notebooks, which then need to be productionized and set up to run on a schedule. Now, this involves working closely with the data engineering team who might set up, you know, your Airflow or Kafka processes to ensure that your code is running in an orderly manner overnight. Um, many checks also have to be put in place. You know, what happens if the code breaks one night? Is it going to break anything downstream or have any business impact? So once the model that I built is actually, you know, running in production happily overnight every day, I would then have to create a set of model monitoring reports. I know that in many larger companies, you might have an entirely separate model monitoring team whose main goal is to ensure all the company's models are running productively and they're all performing up to standard. However, the beauty of data science is that we get to look after this entire spectrum from the beginning of the data preparation to the entire deployment process. So whether or not these dashboards are built in you know, Power BI, Tableau, Asterix, or Rshiny, it really depends on the business. Personally, my business likes to use Tableau as all the different stakeholders are already very familiar with Tableau. Um, we also need to monitor any automated business processes that this model is currently being run in. We gotta make sure it's not making any crazy decisions. And another very important part is the entire change management and quality assurance process. Now, typically this is done via a peer review, which is essentially when someone else in your team reviews your code to make sure that it's all correct. So whenever I need to make a change to any of my notebooks, even if it's just adding in one variable into my data preparation notebook, I will have to go by either Git or Bitbucket, create a branch, make my change, send through a pull request, I will also assign data engineering to as a gatekeeper to approve my change as well as include someone in my team as a reviewer just to make sure another set of eyes is looking over my work and that it's correct. Now when the project is completed and my model is already running in production, I will be supporting other pillars across the business such as the risk team, um, product, marketing, even customer service sometimes with various ad hoc requests, um, developing new product strategies with the product team, as well as refining other strategies that my model is currently being used in. So launching new product strategies happens when we want to come up with a new product offering, such as Instagram coming out with their new shop tab and rolling this out to the existing customer base. So I'll work closely with the product managers and marketing teams to launch this initiative. Um, main part of this process is to do the hypothesis testing and asking questions like, you know, is this going to be well received by our customers? Will it be profitable? Um, what experiments should we test to run this? Are we going to be doing any kind of A-B testing? How long do we need to run these experiments for? What sample size do we need? 
And one of the various success metrics that we will be measured on is this, you know, conversion rate, number of customers, more transactions, and so on. Um, sometimes we also set up a trial experiment just to get some initial findings from the data and then use these to go back and further refine our experiment so we can draw better conclusions. And then it's my role to measure how this might impact our overall revenue, the number of transactions and customers being acquired, and summarize this into an overall predicted business impact of doing this initiative. So in addition to projects and products, there is a separate portion of my work that supports the business regarding ad hoc requests. Now these generally pop up every so often, for example, you might have an executive ask me for a one-off piece of analysis, you know, just urgently pull out some numbers to support some stakeholders or support a business case. Now these can take up a fair bit of time depending on the stakeholder. If it's like, you know, your chief operating officer asking for some numbers, you better make sure those numbers are good quality numbers and you don't want to rush that. Um, it, so it really depends on the stakeholder and the complexity of the task. So most are quite straightforward, but you really do need to have a good understanding of the initial data. This normally comes with experience in the role just to ensure that your output can be very reliable. And the last part of my job is meetings, which is, I'm not even going to lie, the least favorite part of my job. I love socializing, but work meetings should hit you differently. Um, comment down below if you guys agree with me, but I always leave a meeting feeling much more drained than I went into the meeting. So I have so many meetings. Sometimes these are just many, many small meetings that take up so much of my time. And even if they're like a 15 to 20 minute stand up, it still breaks into my regular work rhythm where I just prefer to be productive and crunch out some analysis in two to three hours. But someone is always going to set up a 20 minute meeting in the middle of my afternoon, breaking my concentration streak. Um, they also take away a lot of time from doing work, especially if you've got an urgent deliverable or something that requires just investigation. Having a day full of meetings will also mean that you have to work overtime to compensate and do your actual work after work hours. So lately I've actually been declining more meetings and being selective with which ones I actually attend. Um, in terms of the types of meetings, starting from the top down, there are your all-hand meetings, which are your company-wide meetings where, you know, execs generally share high-level visions and updates for the business. These could be fortnightly or even weekly or even monthly, depending on the size of your business. There may also be meetings with your wider data science and analytics teams in the form of knowledge sharing or just team updates every month. I've also noticed that stakeholders like to set up recurring weekly meetings in the form of project standups, where you normally talk about the week gone by, the tasks to do for the upcoming week and any key updates and any blockers. Um, there may also be new initiatives which are being run and meetings set up for those campaigns, which generally end up with more work on my plate for me to do. Not my favorite thing, walking into a meeting knowing that I'm going to come out with so many more action items. So I also have my regular one-on-ones with my reporting manager and any people in the business that I'm actually mentoring and supporting their transition where, you know, we just chat about personal development, what's gone well, what's gone not so well, and that kind of thing. We also have knowledge sharing meetings. Um, this one's actually pretty interesting because normally you feel like these ones, you get to learn more and sort of see what everyone else is working on in the business. As the name suggests, this is where a member or team shares something interesting to the wider business, whether it be you know, updates to existing processes or just sharing like a relatively cool topic that they've learned over the last month or so. Um, part of my time is also dedicated to training up and mentoring new starters and getting them across our processes and where all the data sits. And every time someone you know transitions into a different role or ends up leaving the business, there will also be a set of time dedicated to the handover process where they pass over all their knowledge onto me or someone else in the team. Last but not least, we also have our social element, which is a lot more different now that we're completely working remotely and on Zoom. But um, this could be, you know, your Friday afternoon drinks, your team trivia events or just virtual coffee catch ups. Yeah, so there you have it. That was pretty much all the tasks that I do as a data scientist specializing in risk and product working in a fintech in Sydney, Australia. 
Um, I hope that this has given you some insight into what this career is like and what a regular person does on a day-to-day -day basis. If you guys are still around at this point of the video, then thank you so much for sticking around and I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you found any of this helpful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting me know what you like the most or what you want to see me cover in my next video. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys stay safe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!